This news update is brought to you by. This is a 6 p.m. Barbados Today update for Wednesday, August 13, 2014. I'm Kmar Jordan. Good evening. Government defends its decision to redevelop the Sam Norris Castle. Speaking in the upper chamber earlier this afternoon, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Irene Sandiford Garner, announced that the redevelopment will not only create 900 jobs over the next two and a half years of construction, but it will also generate over $70 million in revenue once the hotel is up and fully running. The figure, she says, includes $48 million in hotel earnings and another $30 million in peripheral businesses. In recent days, several officials, including the president of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Sunil Chatrani, had questioned the $200 million project, saying the sector was in need of quality and not a greater quantity of hotel rooms. It will definitely exceed the minimum benchmark. We're confident of that. And we haven't factored in the estimates, the benefits that accrue to government, you're looking at that, you're looking at NIS contributions from the 900 workers who will find employment at the facility. And then there are other taxes from transactions that will take place from the establishment of that Samuel Castle facility. Meantime, Bridgetown was alive today with a major entrepreneurial showcase. The event forms part of a week-long celebration marking the 17th anniversary of the Urban Development Com Commission. And chairman of the organizing committee, Leon Chase, is pleased with the public's response. We are trying to show persons that we are not all about just building homes and roads and giving tenantry, but we are about building communities and building people within communities. Because when you have strong people, you have a strong community and a strong Barbados. In other news, the executive of the Barbados Labour Party meets this evening to chart the way forward for the St. Peter constituency. The opposition is currently without a representative for the area after former Prime Minister Owen Arthur resigned from the BLP last month. He is now representing St. Peter, which has been a BLP stronghold as an independent in the House of Assembly. A fitting farewell for a dignitary today, family members, friends, members of government and other politicians, as well as a large contingent from the legal fraternity, said a fond farewell to Sir Dennis Williams, the late Chief Justice, who died last week at age 84. In delivering the eulogy, his son, Sean, reflected on his father's many achievements. Martin Luther King Jr. stated, The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. My father never shied away from taking on tasks and legal issues that he knew would be controversial. He thrived on more challenging issues. He knew that the ultimate decision would be ably researched and concluded, supported by the relevant law and after consideration of the several sides to the argument. It is not surprising, therefore, that although challenged, None of the judgments that he assented on were ever overturned, including at the Privy Council level. May he rest in peace. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. To news from the region now, a warrant has been issued for the former president, Haitian president, that is, John Bertrand Aristide. An investigating judge ordered the arrest of Aristide after he failed to obey a summons to appear at the magistrate's office today. 
The former leader is under investigation for corruption, drug trafficking, and money laundering, among other offenses, which allegedly occurred during his term in office. He was due to appear before the examining magistrate for questioning, but never showed up. Internationally, Brazilian presidential candidate Eduardo Campos was among seven people killed in a plane crash today. According to reports, the Campos private plane went down in Santos, Brazil, after it encountered bad weather, crashing into a gymnasium and two homes. The other victims on board were one of his advisors, a photographer, two pilots, and two others from his political team. Thankfully, no one in the residential community was killed, but some others were injured. Campos, a former governor, was making his first bid for presidential post in the October election. And on that sad note, we end our 6 p.m. update, but we'll be back again tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, or like us on Facebook for the very latest news and sports. I'm Kmar Jordan. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or on Screenplay at supermarkets and a gas station near you. This news update is brought to you by... Mm -hmm.